Thank you very much, Nico. Um, I'd just like to say that this is a, a tremendous opportunity and a total surprise when Nico wrote to me six or seven months ago saying that she'd seen one of my films on YouTube and she'd like to offer me homage to Anthony Stern. Well, this is an extraordinary opportunity, largely because <clears throat> my life has not been that of a filmmaker for the last 30 years. I've been a glass blower. Um, I stopped making films full-time in 1976 and went to the Royal College of Art and became an apprentice to a master glass blower. And I've been doing this since then. Now, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, so here I am, and it's uh, an extraordinary experience because it gives me a chance to <clears throat> look down the wrong end of the telescope. <clears throat> In other words, to see material that I'd completely forgotten about. Because I hadn't really got time to go and review my own work until this moment. I had no real reason to do this. But certainly to see <coughs> the films that I've made, some 10 or so in this programme, 10 or 11, um, to see them as a sort of st a series of stepping stones towards the present, by which I became <coughs> a self-realised human being, <laughs> or partially so anyway. And they're steps in, in the path of uh, <coughs> the archetypal moments through which one has to pass in order to get to where one is. So that's been very exciting and interesting too. And also it leads me right now to thinking about more work in film. Okay, I'll get to the short sentences now. Um, I'll say something about each of the films in turn so we've got a rough idea of what I was intending to do. Uh, Baby Baby, which lasts 12 minutes, was my first film made in 1965 when I was at university. My girlfriend was about to have a baby, and so I thought this would be a marvellous opportunity to have something very real, yet fictional, to make a film about. When I say fictional, I mean there's a process by which when you film something, um, it becomes then a memory, and that memory then becomes a metaphor, and that metaphor then becomes fiction which can be shared with other people. Um, <laughs> That film, uh, okay, it has a soundtrack done by me. And it was the first experience of making films. Um, then comes another film called Nothing to Do With Me. My uh, mentor in filmmaking was a man called Peter Whitehead, whose work has been shown here last year. And uh, the, ch the experiment that I was uh, conducting was to do an interview with Peter without asking questions. In other words, to use the adrenaline of the situation and Peter, I think, handled the situation very well. He obviously talked about ideas which we'd discussed together, but at the same time he turned something very documentary into something quite dramatic. He became himself as an actor. Um, the next film is a film that I shot from... It's made from some material I shot at a, uh, an open-air concert of the band called Blind Faith, which was in Hyde Park in 1969. And this has been re-edited and put together by Stephen and Sadia. This is implying a, a style of filmmaking which is fragmentary, yet um, also documentary. So it's a combination of making an impression, an impressionistic work, which also conveys information. Exactly. Uh, then Serendipity is a film I made really as a sort of job, as a commercial job. It was a, uh, I was asked to make a film about I English architecture and I employed the same impressionistic style again. The film San Francisco comes last in the first part of the programme, runs 15 minutes, and it's, um, <coughs> it's the kind of culmination of a series of conversations I had with Sid Barrett, who was a member of the Pink Floyd, who I was at school with. <laughs> Sid had been doing a lot of work with light shows, and so the film is an attempt to put onto film the experience of a Pink Floyd concert. I was also <coughs> interested by that time, I developed my style into <coughs> one whereby I was trying to see the camera as a kind of musical instrument in the sense that I was shooting single frame exposures and making film somewhat like a jazz music performance using still images as notes. Um, in the second part of the program, it starts with a film called oh, We. Well, oh, sorry. <laughs> the second part of the program. Oh, we'll we'll okay, I oh, will do that again. Yeah, better. Yeah, yes. Okay, fine. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, that's enough for now. And um, so, uh, please enjoy. Thank you very much. Amusez-vous bien, merci.
Okay. Um, the next film is uh, hard to describe. It's <coughs> an exercise in non-linear <coughs> fiction drama. It's uh, fragmented. It's called Wheel. This is which is quite self-explanatory. It's made of a series of fragments which I managed to link together. Um, it came from reading a sentence by Buckminster Fuller. And it goes like this, and you'll never be able to translate this. Inherently regenerative constellar energy association events. <laughs> I'll say it once more. Inherently regenerative constellar energy association events. You get the general idea. It was his idea that the, the basis of human life and existence was that there were units which had inherent power in them. And these are what these fragments of my own life uh, were, were, were deemed to be. Uh, the next film is um, a short little film poem about a girl called Iggy, who was uh, <coughs> a girl who was on the scene in London. She was the girlfriend, she was my girlfriend, and also she was Sid Barrett's girlfriend. So this is this little thank you present to Iggy. Then there's a film about a man called Ted Berrigan, who I lived with. Le film suivant, c'est un film sur Ted Berrigan avec qui il a vécu. He was a friend of Jack Kerouac, and he was a, he's really a beat poet. I made the film with the same attitude that I made the film with Peter Whitehead. In other words, I allowed him to make the film himself, and I was just the mirror. Uh, then comes the Noon Gun, which was the result of a trip I made to the East. I was in search of myself and in search of wisdom and in search of spirituality. And I came across Afghanistan, which was uh, a wonderful place to be and uh, an inspiration. Especially now, um, in view of the fact that Afghanistan has been in a state of war since the mid-70s. I was also able to carry on experimenting with the rhythmic and musical style of cinematography. And this is the first collaboration I had with Sadia Sadia and Stephen Taylor, who are here tonight. And then comes a film which I didn't make, which Sadia made, about me. And it's uh, <clears throat> an explanation to bring together my glass-making career with my film-making career. Um, then lastly is Redux, which is... <clears throat> we've revisited the film San Francisco, which you've just seen. Um, slowing it down, taking it apart and reassembling it, which will be part of an installation and with a soundtrack, which is a, uh, a great contribution to the material, which is uh, a soundscape to do with the 1960s. That's it. Good. Let's go for it. <laughs>